But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremiah 9 verses 24. Hello, gifted church podcast listener. It is the knowledge of God that brings true fulfillment. We have made it our goal to share God's word with you so you can grow and overcome. God bless you as you make time to listen and apply God's word. Don't give up. I see fruits in your future. God's word will not fail. This is your girl, Stephanie, and you're about to hear from Pastor Kwame. Listen and be blessed. I'll be back after the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to begin today's podcast by telling you to don't be afraid about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid about the second coming of Jesus Christ at all. Jesus is going to judge all of us, whether you are a Christian or not. Those of us who are Christians will be judged. But let me explain because some of you know that we're not going to be judged. But I'm talking about we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we will be rewarded or we will not be rewarded. And and that is that judgment I'm talking about in reference to Christians. And then there's a white throne judgment, which is all humanity for sins. Adam, after the last person born, will stand before God. The scripture says, the dead shall give, the sea shall give up his dead. And they will all stand before God. That is what it says, appointed unto man to die once and after their judgment. But I'm, I'm bringing this up to let you understand that God will judge you based on your strength. Remember that God will judge you based on your personal strength. The scripture says he gave them one, five. I mean, he gave them one, he gave them two, he gave them five. So God will judge you based on your personal strength. You understand? So that means that all the things you cannot do, God will not judge you on. But all the things you can do. So I want you to always push to do 100% of what you are capable of. Because when you do 100%, you are considered righteous. Even though in the sight of somebody else, you might not have done all you can. But do all you can and leave for God. And he will reward you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. We honor you for the things that you've done. And we thank you for the life that we have in Jesus Christ. In him we live and move and have our very being. May the Lord protect you. Anybody listen to me today. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord give you power and victory as you do life. In Jesus' name amen let's get busy all right um so one of the things that we are familiar with on this platform is that no bible verse is out of reach when it comes to gifted church podcast we teach on everything and so i'm not exaggerating but there are some bible verses the only place you hear it is from here and we always make fun of the people out there that all they know is that I know the thought that I think towards you, you shall be the head and the tail. So there are some 30 or 40 verses that that's what is out there in the in the social media world. But they are every page, every word in the Bible is rich. So here we tackle all of them and I'm excited about it. All right, let's get busy. I'm I'm reading from and another thing though is that the verse the verse you see. It's not what I'm talking about. You have to listen to know what I'm talking about because the verse you see is almost 99.9% not what I'm talking about because there's something hiding behind the verse that I'm talking about. So with the audio, you get to listen. And now that we've introduced the video, then you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go. I'm spending time with you in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. The book of Genesis chapter number 14, division 18. Genesis chapter 14, 18. This is what the Bible says. It says now, and the word end is everything. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and the priest of God most high, brought Abraham some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abraham. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and the priest of God most high, brought Abraham some bread and wine. And Melchizedek blessed abraham i want to spend time with you on today talking about how to handle the mistakes of your enemies wrong title how to handle the mistakes of your friends got it that's what we are going today how to handle the mistakes of your friends all right um it's going to be get it's going to get interesting so stay with me eschatologically there are things that will happen in our day that didn't happen in the days of old 
eschatology basically means the study of the events of the end times and there is a very critical piece when it comes to the end time and that word is the offense that will escalate the bible says and many shall be offended what it translates is this what didn't offend our fathers who offend us because we are a product of the end times so notice that it takes something little for people to get upset with you it takes something little for people to start calling you names because that is the times we are living in one you miss one phone call and now you are you are the devil in their book because that is the signs of the end time and because of that we easily label our friends who make mistakes against us as enemies all you need to do is make one mistake and your friend that you have been with since you were two years old now this friend is going around destroying you but i came to show you a mystery today that there is let me step back because we don't have um let me step back and check chat with you life is about god life is about god and the ups and the left and the right and all the turns in life every turn is supposed to reveal the glory of god that's why the bible says whatever i do i do to the glory of god every turn in your life is supposed to reveal the glory of god and every turn you make every choice you make every decision you make it leads you to a, a kind of glory that god has hidden behind that decision every choice you make in life it reveals a kind of glory and the better the choice the better the glory are you following and so i want to show you one of the decisions that leads to a dimension of glory that a lot of people never get to see and it's all challenging primarily because of where we are as a people you follow and so let's deal with how to handle the mistakes of your friends now let me now go back into my verse and then show you what is going on so the bible says that abraham and lot rode together when abraham was leaving his father's out he took lot with him and through their ups and downs they became very wealthy very rich and they had a lot of cattle and a lot of men that worked for them so at some point family dispute started coming up because they were sharing the same land but they had more flocks than the land can take so the herdsmen of abraham and the herdsmen of lot started fighting and so the bible says abraham called a meeting and said to lot lot we are family we are blood we cannot let this divide us this is what we're going to do i want you to take a good look at the land wherever you choose i'll go the opposite if you go left i'll go right if you go right i'll go left so we can keep the family together mind you abraham had mentored abraham had kept lot abraham has protected lot abraham has made lot who he is and so bible says lot looked around the land and picked the best place right away there is a red flag if what lot did to abraham was done today to every man of god to every pastor to every father regardless of what it is lot has demonstrated one a sign of a child or a nephew who is not honoring the uncle dishonoring nephew number two a selfish nephew and lastly you notice that not only is he selfish he's also a person that is all greedy if he would because here's the time that lot is supposed to honor the uncle by saying the uncle for all you've done for me i am i was nothing without you it is you that has made me rich so if we are taking the land uncle i choose to take the least and i give you the best because i want to honor you so i don't want to be i don't want to be disrespectful 
I don't want to be dishonoring and I don't want to be selfish. But the Bible says that Lot dishonored the uncle. Lot did not respect the uncle, did not appreciate ungratefulness and took the best portion of the land. Now follow me. So Bible says that when Lot went closer to Sodom where there was more opportunities and enough green grass blessed place Abraham kept what was left and in the process of time Bible says war broke out in the land where Lot was and Lot was captured during the war and when the word came to Abraham oh charismatics are you there all charismatic people I'm a charismatic pastor so leave me alone all charismatic people have this underlining keeping score may God deal with my enemies nonsense that is keeping us from our blessings charismatic people don't forgive I'm blunt with you today they don't forgive half of their all night prayers is that their enemies will see so pathetic so Bible says when Lot when Abraham heard it, Abraham is not a charismatic guy. So he said, I will go and fight for my brother or for my, my nephew. Because if it was you and I who says, God is not asleep. God has handled this ungrateful nephew of mine. It is God who has punished my nephew for deciding to choose a better land and give an old man. Me, an old man, you want me to go work on a bad land to feed my flock and you a younger blood you want to take the best god has punished you if it was carried oh my god that's why they will say but bible says lot abraham went and fought for lot and then gained the victory and the bible says when abraham was coming heaven opened Melchizedek doesn't come from here Melchizedek is not a member of the earth. Heaven opened and Melchizedek descended from a place called Salem and blessed Abraham. I came to declare to you, your Melchizedek will come from the mistakes of your friends. You're not hearing me. Your Melchizedek will meet you from the mistakes, the proper handling of the mistakes of your friends. If Abraham had not fought for a lot. Melchizedek would not show up. The Bible says when the victory was made and he was coming back, heaven opened and Melchizedek descended and blessed Abraham and had communion with him, which was the mystery of the new covenant. Unveil. Ah, my God. If you forgive your friends who have mistakenly hurt you, you will see Jesus before his time. Melchizedek is a picture of Jesus Christ. Yes, I want to put this right in front of you and we talk about how to handle the mistakes of your friends. The point is that I told you that the decisions you make reveals God's glory. If you can forgive your friends who have hurt you, that decision will open the door for a higher dimension of glory you cannot get. So in this world, God has hidden his glory in forgiveness. God has hidden your you see, there's somebody you have not forgiven and you don't understand why it is blocking your marriage. There's somebody you have not forgiven, you don't understand why it's blocking your blessings. There's somebody you have not forgiven, you don't understand why it is blocking the door. Because God has hidden the glory in forgiveness. God has hidden the glory in not taking offenses. The Melchizedek glory only happens to those who treat their friends who hurt them. I'm sure you don't like this message because it's not telling you you are blessed. If you can handle the mistakes of your friends very well by saying that they made a mistake. You know something? Let me tell you something. When I met my wife and I don't know whether we were dating or we were engaged. We got engaged a year before we walked down the aisle you know and we drove to my 
wife's brother. At that time, my wife's brother lived in New Jersey and we were in New York City. So we drove to that place. And my wife's brother's wife, <laughs> a long story, isn't it? She called us and said, This is how you fix the marriage. Always assume that the things your wife does against you was a legitimate mistake. He says, Always give the benefit of the doubt. Always, even if you saw her plan against you, tell yourself that she didn't mean it. And you will never divorce. In other words, there is a Melchizedek once you tell yourself that Lot didn't mean to take the best land. So I'll still go and fight for him. What you tell yourself is what is true. If you tell yourself, my friend is a good person, they didn't mean to hurt me, they didn't mean to hurt you. Because until you can understand that this is my friend and it will be <laughs> therefore he is bound to offend me and I will not take offense if you live like that you will see Melchizedek but you are never going to see Melchizedek and blessings of Melchizedek unless you are willing to forgive your lot are you hearing me and so let's go through the three points on how to handle the mistakes of friends. That's the, the first one is what um, my brother, my my wife's uh, brother's wife, is that right? Told us, give your friends the benefit of the doubt. Don't start with me. It's a pastor. You don't know how many times they've done it. Do you want to see me or not? How many times did Jesus say forgive? Do you want to see me or not? Give your friends the benefit of the doubt. Number two, after you give the benefit of the doubt, number two is to forgive them. Forgive your friends. Forgive your friends. Forgive your friends. And you will see Melchizedek. Today, it doesn't take a lot for people to be offended. Even the post you post, people take offense with it. The picture you post, people take offense with it. What you didn't mean to say, they take offense. What you meant to say, they take offense. Offenses all over. Forgive your friends and you see Melchizedek. And then lastly, Thank God for some of the mistakes they made against you because those are the decisions that reveals God's glory. Jesus said, why, why should heaven clap for you if you only do good to those who do good to you? For your information, those who forgive their lot and don't take offense, let me, God said it this way when I was studying he says tell them that those who do right when wrong is done against them their prayers are treated as pressed in heaven those who do right anyway even after wrong has been done against them their prayers are treated as pressed in heaven they, some people tell you as for you everybody you forgive them even those who are going to kill you. So I just want to get you to bear it is upon this. That the higher dimension, the higher... <laughs> Bible says if you are going to give an offering and you have offend, somebody has offended you and you have not let go, take your offering home. Because that is it. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we pray for help. Sometimes we just cannot come to terms with it. 
because sometimes they did it intentionally. But we pray that you give us the heart to forgive so we can meet our higher dimension. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's word. If you have a prayer request or you need counseling, you can contact us at giftedchurchpodcast at gmail.com. To support the gifted ministry, you can sign up to be a partner with a monthly donation of $20 or more. All givings to gifted ministry are tax deductible. You can always send your one-time donation via cash app at dollar sign gifted church. Thank you.